Hey guys, Power for Truth. So I went to look at this and uh, I'm going to do it. This is a follow up video to um, what Renee Roland did. So she's got this thing where she's talking about uh, sanctification and um, you have to be weary when people start talking about sanctification and adding words to sanctification. You know, the Bible says we are sanctified. You know, we're sanctified in him. Um, when people start inventing words like oh, positional sanctification versus experiential sanctification versus progressive sanctification, you need to watch it because that's typically a subtle way of doing works. In Hebrews 6, 7, it says, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them, by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessings, blessing from God. So these are people who what? Receiveth the blessing from God. What's the receiving the blessing? Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. It, he talks about he's the living water. And so it talks about his grace is sufficient, right? And uh, he reigns upon the just and the unjust because everybody gets the gospel, but not everyone believes the gospel. Meaning a lot of people reject the gospel, which is to reject Christ. It says, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. That's talking about death. That's why it says, does a man gather grapes of thorns and figs of thistles? That's talking about the crown of thorns that was represents death that was on the man, Christ Jesus, who died for our sins. He says, I don't gather death. I don't gather dead sheep. God is a God of living and not the dead. So we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And it says, as in nigh unto what? Cursing. Curse, cursing. Like, you know, the opposite of bless is curse, right? Whose end is to what? Be burned. So when it talks about whose end to be burned, it talks about all the works of the flesh will be burned. It says, saving some with fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the what? Flesh, because the works of the flesh are as what? Filthy rags, and you burn filthy rags. It says, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that what accompany salvation. It says, though we, though we thus speak, right? And so it's talking about people. It says, look, we're persuaded of better things for you, meaning, and things that accompany salvation, meaning you're saved. So once we are saved, we got the free gift by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And we know that we're saved. It's done. It's finished. Now, after we're saved, what are we supposed to do? What's our reasonable service? It's to go out and preach the word in season, out of season. Freely received, we got the free gift. We should go out and freely give. Offer the free gift to other people. And that's why when we pray, we say, Our Father that in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. Because you're saying, look, we've already eaten the bread. We've drank in the living water. You're the bread of life. So we want that bread of life so that when others believe, Lord, they're new creatures and they're worthy to partake because they believed right on, on you who once they eat that bread once meaning once they believe they'll never hunger they'll never thirst once they drink the living water okay so that's what we say thus we speak it says look for god is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love when it's talking about this guys it's not talking about you maintaining your salvation it's not talking about anything like that the Bible is saying the labor of love is when God says, look, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. What do you mean the harvest is the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few? Well, there's many people who need to hear the gospel. So we're going out and we're searching for one thing, guys. What are we searching for? We have the seed. Think about it. We have the seed. What are we looking for? We're looking for faith, right? Because without faith, you cannot please God because he says, once you have faith, you believe and you have eternal life. But without faith, you perish. And God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. That's why it's saying you must be born again. Because since all flesh dies, he says, look, you need to abandon your quote unquote body, your temple, your house. And you need to be born again in a new temple. And that's why it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized in the what? Body, which is the temple of God being found in him, having not our own righteousness. So that's what it's saying. It says, we're going out with the gospel to say, look, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And then we give them the gospel. And if they believe it, God looks at the heart and says, OK, you believed it. OK, you're born again. All right. You're a new creature created in me. Old things are passed away. You're no longer a child of flesh, but you're a new creature created, sealed and sanctified in my temple that's made without hands. OK, that's what he's talking about, which we have showed towards his name. Right. Go in whose name. Right. There's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Right? So the people you minister to, they became saints and now they go out and they minister and they go save other people. So that's that's what the Bible's talking. It's not talking about uh, doing this to prove we're saved or that you should do this because it's saying like, well, these things accompany salvation in the sense of, well, if you're saved, 
uh, you will stop sinning or do this kind of stuff in your flesh. Look, the reason why that is a silly notion, guys, is because, you know, the works of God are the works of the spirit. It says it's the spirit that quickeneth and giveth life, the flesh profit and nothing. It's not the flesh. It's not, we're not giving the words of men. We're the oracles of God. And we say, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, it's God that worketh in me to do unto will of his good pleasure. So, you know, Paul gives his example when he talks about, Paul says this, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Why is he saying it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me? And listen to what he says. For I know that in me, in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Right? So he says, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. When he says how to perform that which is good, I find not. What Paul is saying is he says, you know, my flesh, the old man, which is not me, because he says, look, he says, look, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. So Paul is saying, look, that's the old man. Don't look at the outward man. Because that outward man, if you're looking at that, if you're looking to say, well, I want to see you living a godly life according to my flesh, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Because the children of the flesh are not the children of God, and they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Which is why the Bible says, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwelling. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Which is why the Bible says there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the Bible is saying that first birth, as he told Nicodemus, that's of corrupt seed, that's of carnal seed. But we who believe, we are no longer of that dead fruit, that dead seed, that corruptible seed. People who are here, they can only see that. They can only see that outward appearance. They don't see that we have a whole nother life that's hid in God. And that it's God who worketh in us, you know? And so when we go out and quote, unquote, to save people, we're not the Savior. Who is an antichrist? But he that denied that the Savior is come in what? In the flesh. Because we go out, but it's Christ in us. He's here now because who's the one who's doing the saving if he's not here? So then the Bible says who is an antichrist? It's all those people who deny that Jesus comes in the likeness of Whoever has believed and are no longer children of the flesh, which Paul is saying, look, that's not me anymore. Paul has forsaken his whole foolish genealogy because he's saying all that is counted as dung before God. And that now all the credit goes to who? God who worketh in me to go and save others. I did not save myself. And when I go out and preach the word, it's actually God working in me. So I, I have no reason to boast. This doesn't prove I'm saved. In fact, if you're looking at my flesh, you are sorely mistaken and you greatly erred. You greatly erred. So I give you all that because I want to show you something that Renee has talked about here on her video. I only have 8%, so I got to do this. She's talked about sanctified in Christ according to our saints, our position. So she's talked about this positional uh, sanctification and she's talking about the experiential sanctification. And in the description, what she writes, she says, discuss how we are sanctified in Christ and our permanent positional standing before God. That sounds good. Defending the truth of the gospel, that all who trust in the sacrificial work of Jesus and none of what they do, their own righteousness have eternal life. Amen. We have eternal life. But you got to understand there's two sacrifices. There's one was a sacrifice that was made uh, for death for, uh, under the law. And that's for all men. There's another sacrifice, which is a living spiritual sacrifice, which uh, uh, means we have eternal life. And that's a play on words that God's saying offering up living sacrifice because God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And he's saying that is what can enter heaven because flesh and blood cannot do it. So that's the living sacrifice. And you only get that once you have faith, once you believe the gospel and faith isn't of the law. That's John 16, 9. So it says most confuse salvation with things that accompany salvation, right? So she said things that accompany salvation. Now I just explained to you is just saying that, you know, once we're saved, we can go out and give the gospel to others. That's got nothing to do with, quote unquote, us maintaining or keeping salvation or trying to live holy in the so-called flesh, because our flesh is not holy. <laughs> it's just not holy. Paul just said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. He says, according to the flesh, he's a chief sinner, but that's no longer him. OK, so now I want you to listen to what Renee is saying, because this is the thing that is very subtle, but hopefully you can catch it. But think about it. You're really thinking salvation comes because you deserve it kind of and earn it because you feel bad enough and now you're living good. 
Did you get rid of the laziness? Did you get rid of the gossip? Did you repent of all that? Did you repent of overeating? Did you see people think that they don't sin anymore and they, they miss these things. They, right. That makes sense. If you're using the law lawfully, you're going to use that law as a schoolmaster to bring people into Christ. But once they come to faith, they're no longer under schoolmaster. People can't be saved by the law. So that makes sense to bring up all these things to people who don't believe the gospel. But people who have believed the gospel, they're born again and their life is hidden. God, God is perfect, sinless, just, good, holy and blameless. So if your life is in God, because you're in God, that means your life is what? Perfect, sinless, holy, good and blameless because you're in God. Your righteousness is in God. So your perfection, your sinlessness, your blamelessness, your holiness, your goodness, your justness, your justification is in God. We need to understand that we're in God. So there should be no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, because we're sealed and sanctified in our temple, which is God, which is a temple made without hands. We are the circumcision, which worship God in spirit and rejoice where in Christ, in God, which is a spirit and, and put no confidence in the flesh. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. So we need to understand that there's a, so, so there should be no reference from Renee talking about living some kind of life or any kind of sin or anything, because again, to accuse us of sin is to accuse God of sin, to accuse us of not being holy enough or perfected enough or any of this stuff and saying that we got to progressively do something. Well, is God progressively need to get the sin out of his life? Does God progressively need to be more holy? It, that make, it makes absolutely no sense. So listen to what she says. Still got their flesh. They've just lowered God's standard of the law to think that they live up to it. But if God convicts them of his standard of righteousness, they see they are not without sin still. Now, it's uh, God does give us a way out of temptation. We should not be living like the world. We should keep our eyes on Christ and walk in the truth of who he says we are. But these are things that accompany salvation. So now she's talking about saved people at this point, guys. This is what's the problem. She says we should not be living like the world. God gives us a way out of temptation. Guys, that doesn't make sense because those of us, again, your life is in God. I mean, let me just show you this. I have six. I don't have very long. So I'm just going to show you this. Look, for ye are dead. That's what Paul was talking about. He says, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it. That is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Right? That's what Paul said. But he says, he said, how to do that which is good, I find not. He's talking about his flesh. But he says, hey, that's not me. And he says, but I delight after the law of God, after my what? Inward man. Why? Because the law of the spirit is life. And that spirit of life is it where? In God, in Christ. So it says, for ye are dead. That's Paul's old man. And your life, your new man is hid with Christ, the body of Christ. He's the head, the savior of the body in God, guys. So when she talks about he gave us away, that's talking to unbelievers because it says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. <laughs> right? That's talking to unbelievers who need to believe the gospel. That's not talking to people who are already saved because we're already we're perfected in him. We're, we're sin guys. We are sinless in him because we're, you know, we're born of incorruptible seed. And our life is in God, right? That's the full point of First John three nine. So, when she talks about sinlessness, yeah, we're we're we are sinless because we're our life is in a sinless God. We're in God who's sinless. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed, that's the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever, remaineth in him, being found in him. But our life is hid in God. The him is God, because he is born of God. We're born of God and we're sealed and sanctified in God, who is our temple made without hands. And God is righteous, clean, holy, all this kind of stuff. So that's why it's like ye the Bible talks about ye are Just this. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Wasting precious battery time right now. The Bible talks about us and says, you know, this is what Paul is saying. Paul is like, it's no longer I. So his Paul's like, I used to be of the foolish genealogy, the circumcision made with hands, the Gentiles who claimed that they were something that they were not. 
But he says, I'm avoiding foolish questions and genealogies and strivings about the law because I know that it's, the they that are in the flesh can't please God. The children of the flesh aren't children of God. So he says, look, I'm avoiding that because I know that they that are in the flesh can't please God. And God's a spirit and he's called the father of spirit. So I'm born again of the spiritual word, the seed, the word of God. And he's saying, I know that I couldn't be justified by the law. That law was a schoolmaster, and I understood that I must be saved by grace through faith. So I'm avoiding foolish questions and genealogies and striving about the law. And because I know that it's by grace through faith, I'm saved and my life is hidden. God, who's my righteousness? Right. He says in such were some of you. This is what Paul is saying. That's no longer I, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. Ye are justified in the name of our Lord and by the spirit of our God. Okay, so that's what it's talking about. So when Renee says things like this, guys. Not salvation, all right? Temptation, we should not ask them of his standard of righteousness. They see they are not without sin still. Now, it's uh, God does give us a way out of temptation. We should not be living like the world. We should keep our eyes on Christ and walk so in the truth of who he says we are. See, she says walk in the truth of who we say. Guys, that's teaching words. She doesn't understand that we, our walk is in God. We're in God, right? Are we in God? Our walk is in God. Um, see if I can find this. I'm running out of precious battery time. Look. Here it is. Here's what the Bible is talking about, guys. Listen to this, because she's talking about we shouldn't be of the world. Guys, we're not of the world. It says light hath no communion with darkness. God is light and in him is no darkness. So guess what? We're in God who's light and in him is no darkness and light hath no fellowship with darkness. And the light came into this world and the darkness comprehended it not. We're not of this world. We're not. We're in the world, but not of the world. Right. We're here as strangers and pilgrims, children of the light. So it says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Renee doesn't have a problem with that when she's trying to tell you to believe on the lie of the people who claim they're God's children who are in disbelief. But now all of a sudden she's trying to basically push subtle works on us. Look, and it says, for what fellowship hath the righteousness with unrighteousness? Because the people who are not righteous, who aren't born again, they're not found in God having not their own righteousness. They're self-righteous, right? And what communion hath light with darkness? Well, God is light and in him is no darkness and we're in God, right? And what concord hath Christ with Bilal? And what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Well, don't tell Renee that when it comes to the fake circumcision. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. What? So, so this is how the Bible is saying, touch not the unclean thing because we're in God and God is clean. That's why I just said, like when I was doing the thing, ye, ye are, you know, ye are clean, right? And the Bible's talking about, it says, you know, and such were some of you. And he's talking about we're clean because what? Why are we clean? Because we're in, because we're in God, right? He says, I clean this through the, through the word, right? Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Right. Abide in me and I in you. Right. And that's what it's saying. A branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So he's basically saying that we're born of him, not foolish genealogy, not the child of the flesh, guys. So Renee's teaching works. There's no question the woman's teaching works. She's basically teaching progressive sanctification. And the way she's getting around it, she's saying, well, it's not you don't do the works. She's basically saying God will do the work. That's the same thing that Calvinists teach. They're like, oh, it's not that you're saved by grace through faith. That's why John MacArthur's church is uh, Grace Community and his radio broadcast was called Grace to You. He claims he's not teaching works, but that's the same thing Renee is teaching. But what she's saying, she's like, oh, no, it's not work. It's by grace. But God gives you the grace to walk differently and not live after the world through the experiential sanctification. She's like, no, you're saved now. The same thing. John MacArthur, you're saved. And, you know, I believe in perseverance. I believe in eternal security, perseverance of the saints. But, you know, you should, quote, mature, right? Mature. And then and, and by our walk, what walk? You're talking about the foolish walk of the flesh in which we're not even that's not even us anymore. You're looking at the outward appearance and talking about how we should live holy according to the flesh when we're in the holy, the true and holy living God. 
who is perfect, blameless, just, clean, <laughs> righteous, good, blameless? I mean, what are you talking about? How can you be in God, hidden in God and not be have all those wonderful that's to that's to that's to try that's to condemn God. That's to say that God needs to get more clean or get more get some sin out of his life. And see, this is the problem. Again, I've warned Renee about this, this, this lie, this, this hypostatic union lie, because the only reason that they invented the Trinity was so they can give you an image. And then later on, they came up with the what? God's chosen people saying that they're the apple of his eye, even though it says they don't in the flesh can't please God without faith is impossible. Please. He says, what what communion does believers have with an infidel, an unbeliever? But you can't tell these people who believe in that lie of a chosen race. You, you cannot tell them that because they're like, bless them. Right. Bless them with more land. Oh, I thought it said store not for yourselves treasure on earth. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean it for them. I thought it said they in the flesh can't play. No, 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 no. It doesn't really mean that for them. Right. <laughs> so. You know, you have to watch it because at some point you will teach these lies so subtly you won't even realize you're teaching them anymore. So I don't know. God knows, guys. But. You know, you got to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They're very subtle. They disguise themselves as angels of light and they will use grace all day. John McCarthy uses grace all day, but she's basically teaching perseverance of the saints. She's teaching that lie of progressive sanctification. And she's saying it's not you doing the works that keeping yourself safe. It's just that God will, quote unquote, confirm you to the end. So she's using the Bible. She's using the word deceitfully. Right. So, you know, I hope you understand. Praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.